Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Lesson 23. And today we're actually going to be looking at continue, break, and pointers. And so let's just start right into the lesson. Right now I'm looking at uh, a for loop in PHP, and all I'm going to do is start at the count of zero with a condition of less than or equal to 10 and increment every iteration. And when I do that, I'm just going to print the count out, so I should get basically a string of numbers 0 through 10 with a comma at the very end. Let's run the program. And there's 0 through 10 with your comma at the very end. Now what I want to make a comment about is that at the very end of your for loop, there is this implicit idea that you have a continue there. So basically you can think there's like a hidden continue that you don't see that tells you, hey, what I want you to do is go right back to the beginning of the program once you finish that and check the condition and if the condition is satisfied end it. But you can actually put a continue inside the loop and stop it or skip over an iteration. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to uncomment this piece of code right here. And what you see is you have an if it's equal to 5. So if count's equal to 5 I want to continue. And what that's going to do that means it's going to hit that continue statement and go right back to the loop. So it's, it's going to skip this line of code right here. So you can see continue can be very useful in a program, so you may have a large list of data, but there's certain pieces of it you just don't want to use or, or iterate through, and so you can use continue to actually skip over portions of data. So let's go ahead and run this program and see if we do skip over the value 5. Let's save it and run. And you can see we have indeed the same thing, but we're missing the value 5. So continue, in a sense, allowed us to be pushed back the loop and skip the code underneath it. So that was pretty cool. Well, there's another uh, statement, and that's break. And you've already been introduced to break in the switch statement. Let me comment this out and go to break. So in switch case, what break would actually do for you would actually, in a sense, terminate the rest of the code. So in a sense, in a switch case, you had like tons of cases. Once you hit the case that you you that satisfied the condition, then you just skipped out of the switch case and went on to the next piece of code. And that's exactly what break does in the for loop. You may be iterating through several iterations. But when you meet the condition and you run your break statement, then you, in a sense, end the uh, for loop and skip down to the next portion of code. Let's run this and see what should happen when it's equal to 5. It should actually break out of the for loop and not print the 5. So you should just see 0 through 4 with the comma. So let's see if that works. And indeed it does. You get 0 through 4. It breaks out of the for loop and goes to the next portion. So actually continue and break are very easy concepts to understand. And uh, let me show you some applications of them. So we'll comment this out. So in this next portion, what I want to use is use the a continue statement to get rid of that comma at the very end. 0 through 10 with a comma at the end is not human readable. It doesn't make us satisfied. We don't want a comma at the end. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and monitor our system and when we get to 10 we're going to continue. That means we're going to skip out of, not run that very last line of code. We're going to go right back to the loop which will end at 10. So let's go ahead and run the code. And so we get 0 through 10 with no comma at the end exactly what we wanted. Now we could actually do the exact same thing with break uh, since it is the very last statement. So we're going to do the same thing using break, but as opposed to continuing, which sends us back the loop and checks the last condition. We're just going to break out of the code completely and not print that last comma. So let's go and run the code. So once again, did the same thing with break, the same thing with continue, but, but the difference between continue and break is continue sends you back to the for loop and you keep iterating, where break continually breaks out of the for loop and you go to the next set of code, next line of code below that. So that's break and continue. Now let's go ahead and hit pointers. I think pointers is very interesting. Uh, you've already met pointers. Uh, this is internal pointers to arrays. Uh, you just didn't realize that. And that was in the for each loop. So what happens is, in a for each loop, you actually have kind of an internal uh, pointer that iterates over every piece in an array. But you can work with this internal pointer incrementally uh, using a set of commands. And here they are, end, key, each, previous, reset, and next. And we're just going to give you an example. So we're going to give you an example and a work through example and show you how each one of these commands works. So now we're learning a whole series of new commands, uh, but as we begin to build our PHP base, then we have to learn more and more, and that's the wonders of PHP. So let's go ahead and uncomment section of code right here, and I'll explain it to you as we go through it. We're going to actually use all those commands in the code right here. This is an example that I've highly modified that I pulled from php.net. And it starts with an array, an array of basically transport items. So you can walk on foot, ride a bike, car, or plane. So you have four items in your array. We're going to actually transverse over all of those items in the array incrementally using our uh, n key, each previous reset, and next the commands. Right here, we're just going to print the array out. And now we're going to start, what is the current item? So what current item will do is tell you what your array pointer is pointing out at that point. So right now, whenever you start an array, 
you, it, the pointer is automatically set to the zeroth position, the first position. So what should be printed out when you hit the echo mode here for mode is the word foot. So let's run that, see if it runs. And indeed, foot was printed out. And there's your array, foot, bike, car, and plane. All right, let's look at the next command. So what I want to do here is go ahead and just use the next. So I'll come out these lines of code here. And what next is going to do is actually advance me to the next position of the array. So when I advance to the next position of array, I should actually print out the word bike. And so let's go ahead and run that and see if that happens. And so yeah, the next position of the array was bike. So it's very uh, logical, very intuitive. And then I can go ahead and print out current again. But what current will give me once again is just that same position where I'm at right now. So there's no big deal there. So let's work with the next command called key. So let's uncomment that. So what we've been doing so far is uh, printing out the values, but we're going to actually use key to print out the key. So what should we get? Well, we should be on the parameter bike. So if we, what is the parameter bike? What's its key? Well, this is foot is zero. The key is zero for bike. It's one, two, and three. So we should be printing out a one. Let's run that code. And we see when we start with foot, we go to next to bike. The current label is bike, and its key is one. So everything's working really nice. So you can see how you can push yourself around an array using these different commands. And let's just keep going through. I got a little arduous here, but you get to see each one of the commands work. Each is a really cool command, and what that actually does is sends back your uh, key value in an array. So you actually tap into each one of those. So what I'm going to do is uh, echo out the mode, which is the zero place, which is its key, and the first place, which is its value. So let's run the each command. And there you go. You got your uh, key, which is one, and your uh, value, which is bike. And what happens now is it pushes you to the next value in the array once you use an each. So you're going to go from bike to car. So let's print out current and see if we actually get car as our next value. And you can see, indeed, it's pushed us to the next place, which is car. Let me go ahead and correct that code so I actually get a break in that uh, so it doesn't look that weird. So I'm going to take this right here, copy this. Let's put this on the end so I actually get a break. And uh, let's run that again so you see it. So it just pushed it to the next line. So it went from bike, got the value label, got the key value pair, and then it pushed us to the next uh, pointer. And then the pointer moved to the next place in the array, which is car. All right, let's move on. So now what I want to do is show you the previous command, which in a sense will just back the pointer up. So we're going to back the pointer up, so that should push us back from car to bike. So let's go ahead and run this command. And we see we've gone, and previous has sent us back to the previous label, which is bike. So now what we're going to do is basically go to the very end of the key uh, array. So you can use the word end, and we're going to print out the current value, which should be the end. So let's go and do all that at once. And uh, let's run the command. And so n sent us to the last value, which is plane. And of course, the current value at the last value is plane. So no, no brainer there. So let's go back to the uh, previous uh, uh, code here. And once again, you see, and once again, you see the n command did send us to the last part of the array, which printed out plane. Now, if there's a way to go to the end, there should be a way to go to the beginning. And the, the way to do that is just to reset your entire array. So we're going to use the reset command. And so once we reset everything, we should what? Go back to the initial item in the array, which is foot. I'm just going to run that. And indeed, that does take us back to the value foot. So we've learned a whole series of commands which allows us to incrementally step through an array. And so let's review what we've learned today. So today we learned about the continue command and the break command. And the continue command just sends us back to the beginning of our loop and skips the code below it, where the break actually breaks us out of a loop. So that's pretty cool commands, and those are used in the for loops. We also learned about pointers. We learned how to move ourselves through a pointer array incrementally using the commands in, which takes us to the end, key, which gives us a key, each, which gives, sends back a key, a value pair, previous, which sends us to the previous part, resets, which sends us to the beginning, next, which moves the pointer to the next uh, item in the array. So you can find these very useful when you're trying to incrementally move around an array. Hey, thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively. We'll be moving on to functions in our next video.